I'm new to this. I haven't learned my, my way yet. Hello and welcome. I am so glad you could join us today. It is my honor to welcome you to UCLA's commencement weekend. This ceremony is devoted to honoring the students from the UCLA College of Letters and Science. While the students and the official party are assembling, let me take a moment to tell you about UCLA. I am proud to say that your graduate has attended one of America's finest universities. Forty of the academic departments at UCLA are ranked among the top 10 in their fields, third best of any university in the nation. Every year, the accomplishments of our students grow. You will be pleased to know that the academic performance of the students in the class of 2011 makes them the highest achieving students to ever graduate from UCLA. If you are new to the UCLA campus, you are in Drake Stadium, the home of the Bruin teams in track and field and soccer. UCLA has America's most successful intercollegiate sports program. Bruins teams have won more national champions than any other university. Behind me, you can see much of the UCLA campus. At the top of the Jan steps, you can see Royce Hall on the left and Powell Library on the right. After our commencement, I invite you to look around UCLA. You will find one of the world's most beautiful universities. In just a moment, the graduating class of the College of Letters and Science for 2011 will join us. After the students arrive, the official party will enter, including our faculty, the campus leadership, and our student speaker. Then, as part of UCLA's celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Peace Corps, you will see a procession of student flag bearers representing all of the countries that the Peace Corps has served. I want to offer you my congratulations. I know how proud you are of your graduate and the entire UCLA community shares your pride. Are we ready? Okay. Family and friends of our graduates, I present to you the graduating class of 2011 from UCLA's College of Letters and Science.
Ladies and gentlemen, the official party.
This year, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the creation of the Peace Corps by President John Kennedy. UCLA was actively involved in the Peace Corps from the beginning, training thousands of volunteers and advising Peace Corps leadership during the early years. To recognize the half-century relationship between UCLA and the Peace Corps, our seniors present the flags of the 139 countries the Peace Corps has served for the past half-century. This celebration is part of the true Bruin commitment to public service, a commitment that is shared by every UCLA student.
Hello, UCLA graduates. Welcome to your commencement ceremony. Singing the national anthem today are the Aka Seniors, 16 UCLA seniors who have been performing in vocal groups on campus. Please rise for the national anthem. to introduce the Dean and Vice Provost of Undergraduate Education, Judith Smith. Is this the class of 2011? Yes. Well, on the behalf of the deans and the faculty who join me on stage and others who are hopefully watching YouTube, I welcome you and your family to the commencement ceremony for the College of Letters and Science. I would like to thank Professor Ray Knapp, our college marshal, who is also the chair of the college faculty, for greeting our guest this afternoon. He is a distinguished professor of musicology and a dear friend. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Graduates, today we acknowledge your achievements and celebrate the culmination of your undergraduate studies. You have met the highest challenge of education. You have been partners with faculty and our missions of learning and discovery. You will be the next generation of leaders in any field you pursue. Every year, our students get better and better, and class of 2011, you will be glad to know that you are the most talented and the most accomplished students ever, ever to graduate from UCLA. Congratulations. I would also like to take this moment to acknowledge your class gift, 
Through the student giving campaign, you raised over $45,000 to support many campus needs, including undergraduate scholarships and research support for students. Thank you very much. <laughs> Joining us here today are many special people who stood by you, supported you through your years at UCLA. They're your family, friends, partners, sisters, cousins, grandparents. I would ask that all of you students seating stand, face your parents, and give them a big thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Now, I'm very pleased to welcome the Chancellor of UCLA. Like you, he's a senior. He's been here for four years. Only he's not going to graduate. We're going to keep him here because he has do done so much to strengthen the university's excellent, uh, academic excellence. He has increased the diversity of our wonderful campus and inspired new levels of civic engagement within the UCLA family. Please give a big welcome to the Chancellor of UCLA, Jean Block. Welcome, UCLA graduates, families, friends, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests to this wonderful occasion. I'm pleased that UC Regents Leslie Schilling and Lori Plocioni are able to be with us this afternoon. Welcome to our Regents. I also want to welcome all of the parents, and although you're a long ways off, I can see you're smiling. You've sacrificed a lot to make this day a reality. This hopefully ends your tuition payments for a while, so congratulations to all of you. And now, to the most important people here, the class of 2011. Congratulations, you've done it. So I recognize this has not been easy for any of you and extremely difficult for many of you. It's taken you four years, five years, perhaps longer, but, and this is the important part, you have distinguished yourselves as graduates of this great university. We know the path wasn't easy, but we're proud of each and every one of you, and I genuinely mean that. Uh, you have accomplished an enormous amount collectively, and your individual stories are inspiring. As I was sitting on the stage, I was admiring the 140 beautiful national flags that grace our ceremony this afternoon. I want to talk for a moment about those flags and what they mean to all of us here at UCLA. On the surface, they represent the countries where the Peace Corps has sent volunteers over the last 50 years of its impressive history. As you may know, the UCLA played a pivotal role throughout the Peace Corps' history and today you will be hearing the commencement address from Peace Corps Director Aaron Williams. But those flags also hold a broader meaning. They signify the spirit of civic responsibility and the sharing between cultures that has long been a hallmark of the Peace Corps and of UCLA. It was no accident, after all, that UCLA was selected as the primary training ground for Peace Corps volunteers back in the 1960s. We had the skills, the ideals, and the commitment to prepare those young people for the challenges they would meet throughout the world. And it has been my commitment as your chancellor to encourage and expand those same values at UCLA today. I believe that our rapidly shrinking world demands that we embrace different cultures, learning from them, even as we share our own knowledge. Being a public university, and remember, we're a public institution, means something. Means something to all of us as Bruins and to all Californians, the benefactors of the great University of California's promise. It means that we are obligated to provide each of you with the highest quality education possible. And as one of the world's great research universities, we certainly believe we have met that obligation to you. Perhaps most importantly, being a great public university 
is about who we serve as well as who we teach. I believe, and I hope you do, that our service extends far beyond the borders of our campus. It runs throughout this community, throughout California, and around the world. And I know many of you have served as volunteers in this community, have served as volunteers in communities in other parts of the state, and I am extremely impressed with the efforts all of you have put in. As our early work with the Peace Corps demonstrates, service is part of UCLA's DNA. It always has been. It's the DNA that tells us that we know, you know what is important, but that being of service to the world, giving back, building a better society for all of us is critical. To the members of the class of 2011, I know that not all of you will become Peace Corps volunteers, although I hope many of you will. Some of you will become teachers or artists or CEOs of great corporations, and that's fine. In fact, those of you who make it to the corner office, I hope to see you back on campus someday, dedicating a new library, a new research center, with your name on it. So good luck, and of course, be successful in that effort. But no matter what you become, it's my deepest wish that Bruin values will follow you always. I am very proud of the vast knowledge that UCLA campus imparts on its students, but I'm equally proud of the ideals that we all share. It is the essence, the true core of the UCLA experience. In 1960, when he was on the campaign trail, John F. Kennedy first proposed the idea of the Peace Corps in a speech to a group of students at the University of Michigan. He asked them if they would consider dedicating a period of their lives to helping others in distant countries. And then he reminded them of something important. He said, the university is not maintained by the state merely to help its graduates to have an economic advantage in life's struggle. There is certainly a greater purpose. I fervently believe that the idea of a greater purpose lives here today at UCLA, and I am confident that you, the class of 2011, will carry it with you wherever life takes you. Congratulations, good luck, and give back. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Block. Um, hello, graduates. I am Joe Rudnick. I'm one of your deans. I'm the Dean of Physical Sciences. My fellow deans and I are honored to acknowledge the students who graduate here today with very special academic achievements. As you know, UCLA is one of the world's great research universities. More than half our students add to their academic careers by participating directly in research, working on independent research side by side with faculty or writing an honors thesis or participating in research classes. These students create innovative work and they expand the frontiers of knowledge. Would the graduating seniors who participated in research, please stand so we can recognize your achievements. Congratulations, please be seated. Graduates, I am Victoria Sork, Dean of Life Sciences. I am pleased to recognize our many students who are involved in projects in the community. They accomplish this work through campus programs that bring together civil involvement within academic courses, with ac academic courses. Would all of the graduating seniors who served in the community please stand? Excellent. 
Thank you, and please be seated. Graduates, I'm Alessandro Duranti, Dean of Social Sciences. I am privileged to acknowledge the winners of 2011 Chancellor's Service Award. The Chancellor's Service Award is presented to students whose college careers have been distinguished by dedication to both UCLA and the community. Will the students who have been honored as recipients of the Chancellor's Service Award please stand so we can recognize your superb commitment. Thank you. Please be seated. Hello, graduates. I'm Tim Stoll, Dean of Humanities. I'm here to present our students who are receiving Latin honors, which is recognition for high academic achievement. There are three levels of Latin honors. First, I would like to acknowledge our students who have received cum laude honors. Would you stand and be recognized for your accomplishments? Thank you. Please be seated. Next, I would like to honor our students who are graduating magna cum laude. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Please be seated. Finally, will those students who are graduating with the highest Latin honors, summa cum laude, please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Please be seated. And finally, the last group of students who've already had a special ceremony today are the students who are graduating with one of the highest honors we accord to students graduating from the College of Letters and Science. They are designated as graduates with college honors. These extraordinary students not only finished a major, sometimes two majors, sometimes two minors, they engaged in the academic life. They completed not only their required coursework, but special and rigorous honors courses. Of the 6,000 students who graduated, 600 are awarded college honors. Would these students stand so we might acknowledge your contributions? Good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Hill, the outgoing president of the UCLA student body and about to be a UCLA graduate. It has been my pleasure to serve as the representative voice for student needs this year. I feel honored to be a part of the greatness personified by you, the incredible class of 2011. I am very happy and honored to introduce your student speaker. Ellie Pettigrew came to UCLA as a transfer student. About transfers. And today receives her bachelor's degree in history. During her academic career, Ellie has been actively involved in community outreach programs and peer learning. She led health workshops for the Peer Health Exchange that taught students from low-income high schools and trained UCLA students to be health educators. She was a literacy tutor, worked in homeless shelters, and was a facilitator in the Covell Peer Learning Labs. 
Ellie will be leaving California to go to Mississippi as an instructor in the Teach for America program. Her career goal is to work to close gaps in education that result from poverty and language barriers. Please welcome a graduate who is dedicated to public service, your student speaker, Ellie Pettigrew. Find my place. There it is. Hello, fellow graduates, and all of our faithful fans. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Today, we stand face to face with a choice. Today, the world is asking each of us so what? Now, what will you do? And like every big moment at UCLA, we can start with a question from John Wooden, who asked, we are many, but are we much? UCLA is a huge school, and there are a lot of us here today. But we are not just a giant crowd of people waiting to run out and try to find jobs. We are Bruins. We have done so much to arrive here today, but today is less about what we've done and much more about what we will do. Our achievements mean nothing if we don't remain accountable and supportive of each other. Our achievements mean nothing if we don't look up and see the world around us. And our achievements mean nothing if we are too afraid of losing a comfortable life to risk changing our world. In the conventional grown-up world, our next step would be to get a job and go see any movie we want to see, watch TV everywhere, and drive a car that tells you your Facebook updates. Our jobs and our lives might eventually give us that one thing many of us want to find, comfort. It's so tempting to just want to be comfortable. I love my PJs and would wear them everywhere if I could. But what would happen if we made our comfort the only thing that we hope and live for? Who would we be? Would we be people who only stalk our friends on Facebook rather than have a real unpredictable conversation with the person sitting next to us? Would we become people who gradually stop caring about thousands of little injustices because it takes too much effort to care? Being Bruins gives us a choice. No matter if you studied art or neuroscience, philosophy or women's studies, we have this school and each other backing us up and we can choose to not waste our moments worrying about losing what keeps us comfortable. Our choices will change lives. This university's record is a powerful statement about making a choice. If we had stayed comfortable, would we have pushed ourselves to win 107 NCAA titles, the most of any university? or to raise enough money to send nearly 1,000 low-income children to Unicamp every summer? These achievements did not occur by magic, but happened because people like you and me looked up one day and decided to change something about how the world works and who it helps. So even when we failed that test or missed that shot, we all kept going. With each test we took, each hill we slowly climbed, we chose to be the person we woke up every day wanting to be. And so, even if that means we can't wear our PJs all the time, each of us pushed aside our comfort levels to become the Bruins that we are today. <laughs> Whether you're a lawyer, doctor, teacher, filmmaker or basket weaver, UCLA threw open a door of unexpected challenges and new visions of the world. 
And every day to come is a chance to step a little further out that door. It might be uncomfortable or a little weird sometimes, but our only other option is to never look up and never notice the world of anyone else. As the class of 2011, we have a future filled with technology and luxury. The worst thing that could happen would be if those benefits are all that our future holds. Technology gives us ways to connect no other generation has had. But UCLA asks, will we only sit back and see the world from the safety of our computer or cell phone? As we head to our different paths, we can go with courage to make changes that make all the difference. We are heading into a very big and sometimes scary world. And as Bruins, we can walk confidently into that world. We walk away from here with the responsibility to choose change over comfort and to push ahead in spite of our fear of losing what keeps us safe. Today we're graduating and we have a choice. We can choose to look no further than our own needs or we can set our sails in this unpredictable life and be the Bruins we woke up wanting to be because we are Bruins. Our diplomas are a promise, a promise that we won't just rest in a comfortable life, but we'll always look ahead and confront the injustice, poverty, and pain of our world. This is our promise, and this class of 2011 will not give up on who we are and what our world can become. Congratulations, Bruins. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's inspirational, inspirational for all of us. It is now my pleasure to present the UCLA Medal, the university's highest honor. The medal is awarded to those who have made exceptional contributions to their professions and to our society. The tradition dates back to 1979, and the recipients have included national and international leaders in government, education, science, industry, and the arts. Today, we proudly add Aaron S. Williams to that list. <laughs> Mr. Williams became the 18th director of the Peace Corps in 2009. He was with us in March when we hosted a celebration of the Peace Corps' 50th anniversary, and it is our honor to welcome him back to UCLA this afternoon. A native of Chicago, Mr. Williams has had a long and distinguished career in global development and aid. He was a vice president of the nonprofit RTI International and a mission director in South Africa at the U.S. Agency for International Development, where he led a billion dollar foreign assistance program during Nelson Mandela's administration. As a senior manager at the U.S. Agency for International Development, he attained the rank of career minister in the U.S. Senior Foreign Service. He is a two-time winner of the Presidential Award for Distinguished Service. Just as impressive is his personal history in the Peace Corps. More than four decades ago, he became a volunteer for the organization that he now leads. From 1967 until 1970, he served in the Dominican Republic training school teachers. Like many UCLA students, Mr. Williams was the first in his family to earn a college degree. He has shared the story that after he graduated, some in his family questioned his decision to join the Peace Corps. They advised him to settle down and have a normal career. Thankfully, he didn't take their advice. As a result, his career has been anything but normal. His path from Chicago to Latin America to South Africa to the head of the Peace Corps has been an extraordinary path indeed. Along the way, he has motivated powerful world leaders and talented young volunteers alike to devote their resources and energies to improve the lives of people around the globe. Today, more Americans are serving as Peace Corps volunteers 
than at any other time in the last 40 years. So impressive, I also want to, what's also impressive is California is the state with the most volunteers. After nominating him as the director of the Peace Corps, President Obama said, through a lifetime of service, Aaron Williams has embodied the very best of the American ideal, that the best progress comes from ordinary citizens working, working to bring about the changes they believe in. The UCLA medal, which many of you can not see, probably, <laughs> bears a modified version of the University of California seal. It incorporates one variation. UCLA is inscribed in place of the university's founding date. The reverse side of the medal, for those of you with good eyes, is the, the reverse side of the medal depicts Royce Hall, one of the four original buildings constructed on the Westwood campus. Aaron Williams, will you please join me? Thank you. Thank you. Your medal is accompanied by the following citation. Aaron S. Williams, drawing upon your experience as a Peace Corps volunteer, you have dedicated yourself to addressing global challenges through bolstering international fellowship. You have engaged governmental organizations, corporations, and individuals, cultivating partnerships that turn hope into action and enhance the welfare of people and communities throughout the world. At the helm of the Peace Corps, you continue to champion peace and understanding through sustainable, localized assistance. Your shining example has inspired students throughout the United States to look beyond themselves and embrace public service. For your noble vision, commitment to humanitarian outreach, and a lifelong pursuit of a better world, we proudly bestow upon you the UCLA Medal. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful to be here in one of the greatest universities in the entire world, UCLA. Many thanks for bestowing upon me this tremendous honor. It's a privilege to receive the UCLA Medal. Thank you, Chancellor Block, for that kind introduction. And more importantly, for your years of public support for the Peace Corps. Many thanks to you and the deans, faculty and staff, family and friends, distinguished guests, and most of all, to the class of 2011. Congratulations. Congratulations on the wonderful achievement that we're celebrating here today. Most of you have spent four years at UCLA, and as you get ready to leave, I want to give you a few words of warning about post-campus life. First of all, when you refer to coach, not everyone is going to know you mean John Wooden. They should, but they won't. Second, although they might not admit it, some of the friends sitting next to you right now are going to go to USC for graduate school. <laughs> it's true, happens every year. I've got the data. Third, there are not many places in the world where you can find groceries, clothing, laptops, snowboards, books, and Panda Express, all under one roof. So when the zombie apocalypse strikes, you gotta run back to Ackerman Union as fast as you can. 
And finally, when you tell people that when you were in college, getting from dorms to campus meant walking uphill in both directions, you know, I'm sorry. They're not going to believe you. They're going to think you're getting old. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, UCLA holds a dear place in my heart and the heart of everyone who has been a part of the Peace Corps since our founding 50 years ago. I was fortunate to have been at UCLA this past March for a 50th anniversary celebration of the Peace Corps, which highlighted the strong ties between UCLA and the Peace Corps. My fellow returned volunteers on the panel and I were very warmly welcomed. UCLA was one of the first universities to train Peace Corps volunteers before their departure for service. Since 1961, 1,800 graduates of UCLA have served in the Peace Corps themselves. In fact, even as we are here today, 92 alumni are serving in 46 countries around the world. They're fighting malaria in Senegal. They're running camps for underprivileged children in Macedonia, teaching English in Colombia, combating HIV AIDS in Zambia, and leading many other missions of solidarity and support. So clearly, as you can see, this wonderful, rich tradition at UCLA continues today. Last month, your classmate, Chelsea Donahue, graduated early. Chelsea cannot be here with us today because she is in Ethiopia learning Amharic so that she can be a health care worker with the Peace Corps. And soon, Stephen Binkang and Stephanie Martinez will embark on their own paths of service. Stephen's going to teach English in Morocco, and Stephanie will be a healthcare volunteer in the Cameroon. These young people are great examples of the commitment that UCLA and the Peace Corps share to build a better world. And today, today, I'm calling on each of you to bring that commitment to life. Now, I don't mean that I expect all of you to join the Peace Corps, although if you're interested, I would encourage you to apply, parents and grandparents also. <laughs> By the way, you know our oldest volunteer is a young man of 84 years of age in Botswana. So there's lots of time. <laughs> but what I do mean is that I hope service will always be central to your lives because I firmly believe that greatness comes when you choose to stand for something bigger than yourself. Greatness comes when you choose to stand for something bigger than yourself. Consider the range and scope of the challenges we face in the 21st century. Climate change, global economic crisis, terrorism, nuclear proliferation, the grinding poverty in developing countries. These are challenges, my friends, that no one nation can ever have hoped to meet alone. And for all the ways in which our world has grown closer, inequalities are starker than ever before. Did you know that most people in the world own cell phones, but few have access to a toilet? Or that while our country grapples with an obesity epidemic, around the world, each night, one in seven people go to bed hungry. If we are to overcome challenges like this, we need you, we need you to help show us the way with the creativity, idealism, talent, and drive that distinguish your outstanding 
generation. Because your diploma is more than a record of everything that you've achieved. It's a tribute to your tremendous potential and an open invitation to lead. As President Obama has said in words directed to young people in more than one country, you, more than anyone, have the ability to reimagine the world. You have the ability to reimagine the world. For me, it was the Peace Corps that helped me reimagine the world and my own place in it. I was raised in a working class family on the south side of Chicago. I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. My relatives expected me to do something normal and traditional, to teach high school. But I was drawn to the kind of public service that I had heard President Kennedy speak about. The flights that brought me to San Diego, California for Peace Corps training, and then on to the Dominican Republic, those were the first time I had ever been on an airplane. I worked in a small town in the Dominican Republic, helping a group of rural school teachers gain their high school diploma. They wanted to improve their teaching techniques and access better job opportunities. I was determined to help them succeed. I became their teacher, their colleague, and their friend. It was an awesome responsibility for someone who was only 20 years old. And I learned a lesson that has guided and inspired my work ever since. When people join together in common cause, we, my friends, can achieve magnificent things. I also learned important lessons about humility and hope. As my friend and the distinguished governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, has recently wrote in a book describing the year he spent in Africa, and I quote, I received what I had come for, a deeper understanding of how broken, impoverished, or otherwise challenging surroundings could not defeat the resourcefulness and generosity of people. Personally, I learned the value of people-to-people -people relationships in shaping understanding and trust, something I saw again and again during my time as director of the U.S. Agency for International Developments program in South Africa. There I had the great privilege and honor of working with a Nobel laureate, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He once said to me that the key factor in the post-apartheid future of his nation would be the quality of the relationships between the racial groups of that country. That has turned out to be exactly the case. And that reminds me, however, of a joke that I once heard and I want to share with you. If you're in an argument with somebody, walk a mile in their shoes, because then, even if you can't agree, you'll be a mile away and you've got their shoes. <laughs> but the truth is that being able to walk in someone else's shoes, to empathize, to see the world from their perspective is an indispensable ingredient for building progress and peace. I saw that in South Africa, and it's a skill that Peace Corps service teaches every day. Now, some of you may have already figured out what you want to do with your lives. Some of you probably even knew before you arrived here at UCLA. But whether you already know where you're headed or where you're still wondering in what direction to go, if you let service be your guide, your lives will be immeasurably enriched. UCLA, as we all know, is an extraordinary institution with more majors offered than just about any other university in the world. And in doing each one, there's a path to a career that involves doing well and doing good at the same time, fulfilling yourself and finding success while making the world a better place. So if you study business economics here and you plan to become a global CEO 
I say go for it. Be successful. Hit that corner office. But along on your way to the cover of Fortune, remember you have an obligation not just to your shareholders, but to society as a whole. Don't just set out to make a profit. Make a difference. If you spent the last four years on North Campus studying the social sciences, right? Or the humanities. Your talents can help refine and fuel the engines of social progress through politics, through policy, education, and law, deepening our understanding of one another. Also, if you toiled away in the labs on South Campus, and you plan to become a scientist or an engineer, direct your passion for discovery towards the betterment of the human condition, and know that every contribution that you make can bring humanity closer to curing disease, protecting the planet, solving our energy challenges, and saving lives. I'm certain that I don't have to tell you about service. It's what being a true Bruin is all about. From volunteer day to the dance marathon to alternative spring break, you are already helping a community of heroes, leaders in helping the homeless, supporting the elderly, and so many other endeavors here on campus. So let me leave you with one last lesson from Peace Corps legendary first director, Sergeant Shriver whose can-do spirit and passion for service still today guide our organization. In a Peace Corps early years, critics would sometimes tell Shriver that he was naive. They'd say, isn't it just an illusion to think that the Peace Corps might actually help change the world? But Shriver would respond with a question of his own. He'd say, who or what do you think is going to change the world? Half a century, the answer to that question has not changed. Like Sergeant Shriver, we at the Peace Corps still believe that what can change the world now is the same thing that has always worked in the past, an idea and the service of dedicated, committed individuals to that idea. That's why we are so grateful for you and for inspired universities like UCLA. As President Obama has said, service isn't separate from our national priorities or secondary to our national priorities. It's integral to achieving our national priorities. It's how we will meet the challenges of our times. So to the graduates of 2011, in closing, let me just reflect on the model of this great university. Fiat Lux, let there be light. Class of 2011, that light is you. Congratulations. Thank you, Aaron Williams, for the very inspiring words. It is now my honor to present the candidates for the conferral of the degree, the degrees, undergraduates, seniors, this is it. I will, call, <laughs> I will call on each dean of the college to present the bachelor's candidate to Chancellor Block. If Chancellor Block would, <laughs> would join me. Uh, I first call the uh, Interim Vice Provost for International Studies, Professor Randall Johnson, to present the students graduating from the International Institute. Thank you, Judy. Congratulations to all uh, of you this afternoon. Uh, it somehow seems appropriate, however, that we begin with the International Institute, given these beautiful flags out to the right and left 
and the international focus of our keynote speaker. So will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts degree from the International Institute please rise and remain standing. One of, the, one of the most valued qualities of higher education is the critical role it plays in bridging the gaps that separate nations and cultures. The research and teaching programs in the International Institute are all aimed at crossing boundaries. The interdisciplinary BA programs in the Institute improve student understanding of the world and educate global citizens, the next generation of world leaders and the next generation of Peace Corps volunteers. Institute graduates, you are leaving UCLA with an educational background that will help you to recognize the value of new forms of civic engagement that blur the distinctions between local and global, national and international. Chancellor Block, I am pleased to present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts from the UCLA International Institute. Thank you, Randall. Candidates for the bachelor's degree from the International Institute, please be seated. The candidates for the bachelor's degree in the Division of Physical Sciences will be presented by Dean Joseph Rudnick. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Physical Sciences please rise and remain standing. Uh, just a, a note, this includes students in environmental science. So, they're good. At UCLA, work in the physical sciences spans the fundamental processes that affect our physical world. On length scales ranging from microscopic to cosmic, over spans of time that range from billions of years to nanoseconds. Our students explore the natural sciences using the tools of environmental science, atmospheric and oceanic sciences, statistics, earth and space sciences, physics and astronomy, mathematics, chemistry and biochemistry. <laughs> to better understand the characteristics of energy, matter, numbers, our Earth, our oceans, our atmosphere, our solar system, our galaxy, and our universe, our world of machines, computers, miracle drugs, and instant global communication is built on the foundations created by the great physical scientists of previous centuries. I know that the graduates here today, the new scientists of our era, will contribute to the advancement of knowledge and the improvement of the human condition. Chancellor Block, it is my honor to present to you the ferociously dedicated, extravagantly gifted, inquisitive, analytical, altogether stellar candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Physical Sciences. Thank you, Joe. Candidates for the bachelor's degree from physical science, please be seated. Now presenting the candidates for bachelor's degree in the Division of Humanities, we have Dim T Dean Tim Stoll. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in the Division of Humanities Please rise and remain standing. Humanists, you have spent your years at UCLA examining the most profound issues relating to the human condition. You have learned to understand and respect the languages, philosophies, traditions, and cultures of our nation and of the wider world, and to appreciate what unites us all. Chancellor Block, 
It is my privilege to present to you our informed and articulate majors in languages, literatures, and cultures from around the world, including majors in Hebrew, Latin, Greek, Russian, German, Old Norse, Armenian, Arabic, Persian, Hindi, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish. Also, our insightful and sophisticated majors in the study of religion, comparative literature, classics, and linguistics. Finally, our creative and contemplative majors in music history, art history, philosophy, and English. Chancellor Block, I present to you the literate, logical, brilliant, creative, and humane candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts from the Division of Humanities. Thank you, Tim. Candidates for the bachelor's degree from humanities, please be seated. Presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degree in life science is Dean Victoria Sork. Come on! You want to say please stand? There they are. All over in the corner. Thank you, Judy. The life sciences are... It's, we all standing? Well, the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Life Sciences, please stand and remain standing. The life sciences are transforming discovery for the 21st century with new tools, new approaches, and new thinking that are leading to innovation that affect all facets of life. Our students and faculty play an essential role in clarifying life at its most fundamental and complex levels. The structure of genes, the function of human cells, the development of organisms, the working of human mind, the evolution of species, the challenges of biological conservation, and many other diverse fields of study. Life Sciences addresses many challenges of today in human health, health of nature, and production of food and biofuels. Our programs for undergraduates bring together an extraordinary range of interests in biology, neurosciences, ecology and evolutionary biology, marine biology, Microbiology, immunology, and molecular genetics. Physiology. Molecular cell and developmental biology. Computational and systems biology. And psychology. <laughs> Chancellor Block. I'm honored to present to you the psychologically well-adjusted, <laughs> biologically sound, neurologically well-connected, ecologically sensitive, evolutionarily complex, immunologically resistant, molecularly based, physiologically integrated, developmentally sophisticated, computationally advanced, and very simply, special, special candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the Division of Life Sciences. Thank you, Victor.
Victoria, candidates for the bachelor's degree from life science, please be seated. Now presenting the candidates for the bachelor's degree in the division of social science is Dean Sandro Durante. Thank you, Judy. Will the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts in the Division of Social Sciences please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Human societies are the products of millions of years of evolution, cultural transformations, and innovations. The social sciences help us make sense of both the long-term and the sudden changes taking place in our homes, our schools, our universities, families, workplaces, government, street corners, and computer screens. Now, here comes the first part of the call and response, okay? Social scientists carry their research across a wide range of disciplines. Listen to this. <laughs> Including American Indian Studies, Afro-American studies, Asian-American studies, Chicana-Chicano studies, women's studies, communication studies, geography, anthropology, sociology, history, political science, economics. The theories and methods you learn at UCLA are meant to help you for the rest of your life to navigate the complex social worlds you will inhabit. Graduates, our hope is that you will use what you have learned about societies and cultures at UCLA to build a better world, not only for yourself, but also for the generations to come. Second part of the call and response. <laughs> Chancellor Block, I'm honored to present to you the very cool Creative, intellectually engaged, research savvy, service oriented, multilingual, multicultural candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts from the Division of the Social Sciences. Thank you, Sandro. Candidates for the bachelor's degree in the Division of Social Sciences, please be seated. Now, all candidates for the bachelor's degree have now been presented. I call on Chancellor Block to, to, to confer the degrees of the Bachelor's of Science and Bachelor's of Arts for the class of 2011. Will all of the candidates for the degrees please stand and remain standing? Candidates for the bachelor's degree, your presence here today demonstrates the rich reward of intelligence and perseverance. We take great pride in celebrating the achievements of the class of 2011. I hope your experience at UCLA has opened new windows on the world for you and leaves you yearning to learn more. This is just the beginning of life of continuing discovery for as a lifelong learners who will excel in our rapidly changing world. Now this is the few words I will now repeat that if I fail to repeat these, you would have to come back next year. So I will carefully repeat these. Now, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the regents of the University of California, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science Congratulations. Graduates, let me congratulate all of us for becoming the newest alumni of UCLA as the class of 2011. Now, we have one final tradition to observe, and I don't mean jumping in the fountain. 
Before we received our degrees, we wore our tassels on the right side of our mortar boards. Now that our degrees have been confirmed, it's time to move the tassel to the left side of our mortar boards and join the select company of UCLA graduates. Bachelors, let's turn our tassels. I'd like to say congratulations again to those who have now graduated from UCLA and to close the commencement today, please join me in singing the alma mater. It's printed on the back of your uh, folder. Leading us in this, hail to the hills of Westwood will be Melissa Mitchell, who is now a new graduate of UCLA in psychology. Melissa? Hail to the hills of Westwood, to the mighty sea below. Hail to our alma mater, she will conquer every summer as you face your new life and your new emphasis on service. This concludes our commencement ceremony. Again, congratulations to all.